Okay, so today we're doing chapter four, which is the skin, the integument or the integumentary system. It's kind of amazing. Most people don't die from skin problems, but there are probably as many skin conditions and diseases as there are all the other conditions in the body combined. There's a lot of stuff. The good thing is that a lot of these terms you're going to wind up using later because if you have a different condition, it may manifest itself on the skin. And so just learning these for the skin is good, but you're also going to use some of these terms over and over again. Let's do a quick review of how the integumentary system is laid out. The skin. And the nails, hair, and glands that are part of the skin, the integumentary part of the, of the, um, of the system. The skin, uh, it's protective, it's waterproof, pretty much. It's fairly tough on the top. Skin cells start out viable and fast growing. As they get toward the surface, they flatten out and harden, they get keratinized. Keratin is a substance that makes up nails, it makes up hair, and it's in the surface skin too. Even if your skin is soft, it's fairly tough. It doesn't just break all that easily. Prevents bacteria from coming in, it has ba antibacterial uh, substances on it. Regulation of body temperature, it brings heat to the surface so that you can sweat and it can evaporate and cool you off, or it constricts the blood vessels and keeps the blood away from the surface when you're cold and you don't want to lose any more heat. So thermoregulation is a big deal. It also makes vitamin D out of sunlight. And vitamin D is a required nutrient because it allows your receptors in your intestine to absorb calcium. Without vitamin D, you can't use calcium. Here's the whole thing. The epidermis is this layer of flat, squamous um, endoepithelial cells. These are the fast-growing ones. These are the dying and then dead, hard, flat ones on the surface that give you protection. That's the epidermis. The dermis is this more glandular layer. It's full of the sweat glands and oil glands, a lot of blood vessels, a lot of nerves. Here's a hair follicle. It gets its blood supply at the base. It's forming keratin that piles on top of each other and extrudes outward. Here you have oil glands that secrete oil into the hair follicle, so the oil on your skin comes out with the hair. Has little muscles in it that can make your hair stand on, in, stand on end, supposedly to make you warm, or like a cat that gets scared, makes you look bigger, except we don't have enough hair for that to actually work very well. Epidermis is the outer layer. Keratin is the hardening substance that is in the, the uh, skin, the surface layer. Karato means horn-like or horny-like. Uh, uh, so it can make a horn of a cow. It can also make a nail or hair for us. Melanin is the color. It's a blackening agent. White people don't have as much, black people have more, everybody has different amounts. Your melanocytes are the cells that make melanin when you need it to protect you from the sun. That's why you get a suntan when you're out in the sun. It's trying to defend the deeper cells from cancerous changes caused by ultraviolet radiation. The glands, sudoriferous glands, are sweat glands. Um, and 
I remember because sebaceous and sudoriferous sound kind of alike. I think sweat has odor. Sudor sounds a little bit like odor. Sudoriferous glands are the sweat glands. They take fluid directly from the blood and extrude it out through a sweat pore so that it can evaporate and cool your body down. Sebaceous glands, oil is called sebum, sebum, so sebaceous glands secrete oil. And as I said, they secrete them into the hair follicles so that it can be pulled out along with the hair. Both of these have antibacterial agents in them, um, and the oil is what helps you be, stay waterproof. Hair is mainly keratin. They are keratinized cells that become so full of keratin that when they flatten out, they're just a solid little piece of keratin. And under a microscope, you can see layers and layers and layers and layers built on top of each other, creating that hair. Nails are like a big, wide, flat hair. Keratinized material that comes out from the nail bed to protect the end of your finger. So let's look at the medical terms that are used to describe these various structures. Cutaneo is the combining form. Cutane is the, is the word root. But we always put the combining forms up here just to, because they're easier to say too. Cutaneo, dermo, and dermato are three different terms that are used for skin. Subcutaneous injection. That makes sense. Um, you have dermatitis um, as a you know, skin condition. Hydro or hydro is sweat. I remember that because if you sweat, you're like a water hydrant, a fire hydrant. Okay? Hydro. Karato means hard or horn like. Nails are aniko or unguo. Aniko, unguo. Ungulates are hooved animals. So our nails could be described as our hooves, but we probably use aniko more frequently. Sebo for sebum for oil. And trico is the term for hair. Trico. So what's a hor the horny tissue? Karato. The epidermis. Dermato. Dermo. Cutaneo. Hair is what? Trico. Sebum is sebo for oil. Sweat, hydro. Fire hydrant. A lot of terms that are going to describe what's going on with your skin. Auto means self. So if you have an autodermatoplasty, what you're doing is taking some of your own skin and, and making a skin graft with your own skin. Auto. Bio means life. Remember, by something or other, bilateral referred to, to um, two sides. But in this case, like a biopsy is a, a, a looking at a live sample. Biopsy. Conio, kind of a cool term. Dust. And I always get everybody to remember this one because I think of a cone filled with dust. Take a cone and scoop some dust. Conio. Crypto. You know what a crypt is? It's like where the dead people live. Okay? Underneath the ground. So crypto means hidden or beneath. 
Hetero comes from another, another type, another person, another animal, or whatever. So a hetero dermatoplasty would be getting a skin graft from somebody else or from a pig or something. Myco, we're going to see this one forever. Myco always refers to fungus. Michael has a fungus. Myco, fungus. Necro, dead. Necrosis means the tissue is dyed. Necro. Pachyo means thick. Kind of elephant-like skin. <coughs> a pachyderm, an elephant, a rhinoceros, a hippopotamus, what that means, they were named thick skin. Pachyderm. So, pachy. Ritido means wrinkle. Ritido sounds a little bit like wrinkle. If it started with a W instead of a R, it would help. Ritido. Staphylo is staph infection, and strepto is a strept infection. So staph staphylococcus, streptococcus, uh, coccus, or a lot of skin infections are staph and strep. And zero means dry. It's pronounced like it's a Z. A Xerox machine. It was the first dry copy machine. Before that, it was like wet ink that went on there. So a Xerox machine. A xeriscape is a dry landscape using cactus and rocks and stuff. <clears throat> Epi means on top of the epidermis. An epidural is outside or uh, of the dura. Intra is within. An intravenous or IV line would be inside. Para is close or around it, like a paranormal. It's not quite normal. It's around the outside. Per means through. Percutaneous drugs are put on with a patch, and they have to be absorbed through the skin. Or a Sub, actually trans, they, they prefer to be across, trans, like a transdermal patch. That's what I was thinking of. Per means through. So percutaneous goes through the skin. I'm sorry. And so you can take like a percutaneous angioplasty. They have to go through the skin and into the blood vessel so that they can do something on it. So that's through is per. Sorry about that. Sub means beneath. So subdermal is right under the skin. And trans is, is what means across. That transdermal patch um, they'll use for um, a variety of heart medications and things where they can soak across gradually. A is just an end that they put on stuff, uh, end, derma. Coccus means bacterium, so streptococcus. Staphylococcus, coccus. There are several other bacteria that have this on the uh, as a suffix. An ectomy is a removal. We'll see this in every single um, body system we have. Ectomy, a tonsillectomy, appendectomy, hysterectomy. It means to remove something, take it out. Ea. A disease state. Itis, we already know that's inflammation. We also know that pathy is disease, so we, we already learned that one, but we'll, you know, we'll see those. Malacia means softening. Opsy is, is an examination, so a biopsy is an examination of live tissue. At least it was live when you took it out. Phasia is eating. Plasty, surgical repair. We're going to plasty everything in our body. You're always repairing what's broken. Repair, plasty. Rhea is flow. Diarrhea means full body flow. But you can have other types of rheas. Um, you can have 
rhinorrhea, where you can have a, a runny nose. And a tome is a cutting instrument. I think of cutting a tomato, tome. And the term tomey means the process of cutting, but the tome is the instrument itself. Now, I told you there were a million words in this lecture. There are, but you will learn them. Trust me, everybody always does, because so many of these we'll use over and over again that you'll get good at them as time goes on. Eating or swallowing is which one? I don't eat elephant. No, it's phagia. What's a plasty? Repair. So, how many diseases and spots and bumps and lumps can you have on your skin? Lots and lots and lots. Dermatitis. The thing is, if you remember that dermat is skin, itis is always inflammation, dermatitis. Dermatoconiosis, a condition, osis means a bad condition, caused by dust on the skin. Remember the cone of dust? Dermatoconiosis. Some people are sensitive to dust, especially at certain times of year, or if the dust is coming from a a sulfur mine or something. Dermatofibroma. Oma is a tumor, fibrous tumor of the skin. Hydradenitis. Itis is inflammation of what? Adin is a gland. Adin is a gland. And hydro is a sweat, gl uh, sweat. sweat gland inflammation. Leo means smooth. Leo, smooth. Think about laying out smooth, a smooth piece of paper. Leodermia, it's a condition where the skin becomes really slick and smooth, kind of like scar tissue can be. Leucoderma turns white. Remember, leuco is white. Onychocryptosis. Bad condition of hidden fingernail, an ingrown fingernail, ingrown toenail. Onychomalacia, softening of the nail. Onychomycosis. What did Mike have? A fungus. Nail fungus. Onychophagia. Eating your fingernails. Pachyderma, it's a condition that causes your skin to become really thick, an elephant-like skin. Peronchia is a condition of the nail around it. It's when you get an inflammation all the way around the nail. Flow of oil, seborrhea. It's a condition where so much excess oil flows that it causes inflammation and crusting on your skin. Trico is hair. What does Mike have? Fungus. It's a condition of fungus of the hair. Hair fungus. Xeroderma. Dry skin. Paronchia. It could be paraonchia because para is the around, but they dropped it out because it's hard to say paraonchia. Paronchia. Abnormal condition of fungus of the nail. Osis. Myco. Mycosis. Onico, onico mycosis. What about inflammation around the nail? Para onchiitis, or ia in this case. It's just ia. It's not inflammation, 
just condition around the nail. So paronchia, the same one we had here. And they, it says in your book that the A on the end is just thrown in. But it sort of means condition to me. You know, you're not a pachyderm. We're not an elephant, although I'm getting that way, I feel like, sometimes. But pachyderma is a condition of thick skin. So it's almost like the Ia thing. Do some analyzing and defining. As we move along, we'll do this less and less, but that doesn't mean it's not a good exercise for you to do it. Onychomycosis. Well, that's a word root, meaning nail. There's a combining vowel, so there's the combining form. There's a word root, fungus, and that is a suffix meaning condition. So bad condition of fungus of the nail. You can do that on these. Dermat, O, Coney, Osis. Do it as many times as you want. And your practice stuff, they'll have you do this until you can't stand it. The good thing with those practice things is when you get tired of them, switch to something else. Oh my goodness, here we have a lot of diseases and problems of the skin that are not made up of word parts. See, you can't say coniosis. You have to remember what an abrasion is. An abrasion, a scrape. An abscess is an infection of fluid-filled, pus-filled, infected hole in you. You know, it's a lot of times you have to pop it and let the, let the pus out so that it can heal. Acne, a skin condition, mostly from adolescence, that is caused by too much oil coming out too fast and clogging the pores and causing inflammation and ultimately infection inside there. Actinic keratosis, condition of hardening, and it's, again, it's not really word parts. Actinic is just the name. It's kind of acne-like hardening. Albinism, you don't have any melanin in your skin, so you're completely pale. Basal cell carcinoma, it's a cancer, cancerous tumor, oma, carcinoma, cancerous tumor, coming from basal cells, the deeper layer of cells in your skin. Candidiasis, condition of infection with the candida um, fungus. A carbuncle is a bunch of boil heads. If you've ever had a boil, they're not much fun. A carbuncle is several of them clumped together. Cellulitis is an infection, inflammation of the skin, usually in the legs. Contusion is a blow caused like a black eye as a contusion. Eczema is just an inflammatory skin disease. A splisher, fissure is a split in the skin, like you get a split thumb. A split fingertip, if you've done too much yard work, that's a fissure. A furuncle is a single boil. Carbuncle is multiple. Furuncle is a boil. Gangrene is when the tissue dies from lack of blood flow, and it's an infection that causes a swelling that blocks off the blood flow. It can lead to having an ampu amputation of a limb. Herpes, 
infection by the herpes virus. We have a couple of kinds of herpes viruses. Impetigo is an infection of the skin, a bacterial infection that kids tend to get. An infection just means that you have either bacteria, virus, fungus, parasite has entered your body. Let's keep going. Kaposi sarcoma is an opportunistic cancer that comes to people primarily who have AIDS. The HIV virus causes AIDS if it's allowed to. If somebody progresses to AIDS, their immune system can't fight off things like these cancers, and they get the purple spots all over them. A laceration is a cut. Everything from a paper cut to having your throat slit. A lesion is any damaged spot. Oh, we saw, found a lesion on the kidney. It could have been caused by a bacterial infection at some time. It could have been a blow from a football helmet if you're playing football. A lesion is just a damaged area. MRSA infection, this is that hard to treat, resistant. Staphylococcus aureus bacterium that um, is becoming more and more prevalent. We all, so, we all have some MRSA on our skin all the time. It's just our immune system normally keeps it under control. If it starts to take charge, though, it's hard to get rid of because it's resistant to a lot of antibac um, antibiotics. Pediculosis or lice. Psoriasis, like eczema, is a skin disease. Psoriasis is at least partly caused by autoimmune uh, attacks on your skin. Rosacea, your skin is a condition that makes your skin really red. Scabies are mites. Scleroderma, scler sclero means hard. Arteriosclerosis means hardening of the arteries. Scleroderma is a condition where the skin hardens and shrinks. It can cause you to lose your fingertips. Squamous cell carcinoma, a more surface cell, is becoming cancerous. Systemic lupus erythematosus means reddening condition caused by a systemic autoimmune uh, disorder that most of us just call lupus. Tenia are, is the ringworm fungus. It causes a few different types of fungal infections, but they're tenia this and tenia that. And urticaria is a Skin inf inflammation where you get these spots called wheels that just suddenly raise up out of nowhere. It's an allergic reaction, except it's not always clear what you're being allergic to. You just are suddenly covered with all these raised itchy spots. So your bacterial infections are boils and multiple boils, peruncle, carbuncle. Cellulitis was an infection of the skin cells. Impetigo in kids, MRSA. And an in infection around the nail causing it to redden, peronchia. Your fungal infections are primarily candidiasis from the candida albicans fungus. We'll see a couple of those. Your tinnias, which is that ringworm fungus, and trichomycosis, hair fungus. Parasitic infections are usually mites and lice. 
scabies, and pediculosis. And your viral infections are of the skin, anyway, are herpes, herpes simplex 1 is mostly cold sores, herpes simplex 2 is largely genital herpes, and herpes zoster, which causes both sh chicken pox and shingles. So there are really three kinds of herpeses, simplex 1, simplex 2, and herpes zoster are all herpes viruses. We also have the human papilloma virus, which I don't know why they didn't put it on that slide, but we're going to see it so much that you'll get used to it. HPV, which causes warts. Here's impetigo on a young kid. Bacterial infection. You know, the kids like to grub around in the dirt and in cat sandboxes and stuff. Here's a couple of your tinnias. Tinea corporis is called ringworm. Corporis means on your body. Tinea pedis, athlete's foot. It's the same fungal infection, but it, it affects you slightly differently there. Tinea cruris is jock itch. Scabies are mites. Mites are little tiny critters that are basically, you can't even see them, and they burrow into the skin and lay eggs in your skin, and it becomes inflamed. Here's herpes zoster, shingles. Anybody who's had chicken pox has the herpes zoster virus living in them for the rest of their lives. Parents used to, you know, if there was some kid in the neighborhood had chicken pox, it was so contagious that they'd get every, all the kids together and they'd have a chicken pox party, they'd all catch it, they'd get over it, and everybody was fine, they thought. But what they were doing was giving them a lifelong dose of herpes zoster virus, which sometime in their 40s, 50s, or 60s, it, it hibernates inside your nerves. And it comes out, see there's a nerve that runs along between each set of ribs, the intercostal nerves, and this herpes zoster suddenly breaks forth, and people describe it as feeling like they were burned by a blowtorch. It's really not good to have. There is a uh, vaccine now that is reasonably effective. They recommend people over 60 get it, if they haven't already gotten shingles by then. Death of tissue, loss of blood supply caused by bacterial infection is gangrene. Pediculosis is lice. Impetigo is a bacterial infection of the skin. Surgical terms. Okay, we're going to have plasties. We have to fix things, repair. We're going to have tomies. We're going to have to make cuts. Biopsy, looking at a biological sample. Dermatoautoplasty, repair using your own skin of your skin. Repair using some other skin of your skin, dermatoheteroplasty. Dermatoplasty doesn't tell you which one it is, it just says you're repairing the skin. A dermatome is something you cut into the skin with. Onychectomy, what would that be? Removal of a nail. Sometimes they become so damaged, it's better to take them out and let new ones grow back. Ritidectomy, ritidoplasty. These are repairs or removal of wrinkles, various kinds of cosmetic surgery. Cauterization, you don't only use it for the skin, 
This is sealing off a bleeding area by heating it, by burning it shut. Cryosurgery is to use a cold knife to cut it or some kind of cold substance. Again, if you go to the dermatologist and you have some precancerous spots on your face, they'll take this liquid nitrogen and ch -ch 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 -ch, and it burns those scale, uh, cells and kills them and they peel off in a couple of days. Debridement is removal of dead tissue so healthy tissue can grow underneath. You have to do that a lot with burns. You have to get rid of the burned dead tissue so the healthy tissue can grow. Dermabrasion is a smoothing process. If you've been damaged in an accident or if you had really bad acne and you want your face to be smoother, they can sort of sand it smooth. Excision, to excise is to, it's not exorcise, excise is to cut something out. An incision is to make a cut into it. Incision and drainage is what you do to things like boils, cysts sometimes, laser surgery. We're using a laser knife to cut things or burn things. Mohs surgery. I had a small skin cancer on my cheek. So small, I didn't think it was a big deal for a while. I thought maybe it was just a, you know, a pimple. But I went to the dermatologist and they said, no, it's a basal cell carcinoma. And so they cut it out. And I wound up having an area the size of a quarter cut out of my cheek. It was kind of amazing. But they did Mohs surgery. And what that is, is they cut a small piece and they test it right there to see where, how much cancer there is in the borders. Then they can take a little more, take a little more, and take a little more until finally they have clear borders. If they don't do that, they have to take so much on the first try just to be absolutely sure that they wound up making a bigger hole. No telling how big it would have been. I wouldn't have had a face left. To suture something is to sew it back up. Cauterization, burning it away and watching it grow back and peel off. Now this is a pretty deep one. When they do the, those um, precancerous little things on your skin, they just take the epidermis off. Cryosurgery, I've had it done this way and this way. Spray bottle or dipping it in liquid nitrogen on a Q-tip. Debridement, taking off the dead skin so that the fresh skin can granulate and grow back. Granulation tissue is cells, fast-growing cells that start the healing process. They grow up, they aren't the final cells that are going to be there but they um, a, a form a scaffold for the more slower growing but um, real final cells to grow into. So you want the granulation cells to be able to grow and cover it and then the epithelium to be able to grow over that. Mohs surgery, marking out the boundary here starting as small as you can. You think you might get all of it, but you're not going to overdo because you wind up taking half their nose off. Took a big chunk as it was. Some complementary terms. A dermatologist is the doctor or the studier of skin. Dermatology is the study the, the field. Epidermal has to do with the epidermis. Erythroderma, turning red. 
Remember, erythro is red. Hypodermic means it goes beneath the skin, right? A hypodermic needle goes intradermal. You're going right inside the skin, not going down, but like a skin pop. Keratogenic is something that will create hard things, kerato horn like stuff. Necrosis is um, a condition of dead tissue. Percutaneous means going through the skin to get somewhere to do something. Staphylococcus, staph infection. Streptococcus, strep infection. Subcutaneous means right beneath the skin. It's not in the skin. It's not really into the tissue below the skin. It's right below the right underneath the skin. Transdermal, the one I tried to get wrong before, that's that patch that allows the uh, medicine to move across the skin. Transcontinental, you're going across the ocean to another co continent. Trans, you're crossing something. Ungual refers to a nail, so, so does onico. Xanthoderma, remember xantho? Yellow skin. Jaundice, makes your skin turn yellow. Now your book likes to try to ask questions about the strep and the Staphylococcus bacterium. I don't think you're going to spend a lot of time looking in microscopes to try to see if somebody has a strep or a staph. There are other ways of testing that now. But they still seem to think this is like clusters of berries and this is more like a string of pearls. You know, staph, straight, you know, compared to the other one. I don't know how you remember that. I won't ask it personally, but you're going to probably have a book-generated test question that has one of these on it. Intradermal, right in the skin. Transdermal patch, crossing the ocean, cross it. And hypodermic, going under, all the way under. Subcutaneous, hypodermic. Oh my goodness, what a surprise, there are more. You can take a break anytime you want to, you know. That's not true of the students if they're in a live class. They have to sit here and suffer. Although they love me so much that they don't suffer all that badly anyway. <clears throat> Alopecia is hair loss. A bacterium, we know what that is. A cicatrix is a scar. Cicatrix is a scar. A cyst is a fluid-filled space. Now we're going to see this used a lot because your bladder, the term for bladder is, your, is a cyst. It's a fluid-filled space. Your gallbladder is a fluid-filled space, but you can have cysts in your skin. Cytomegalovirus, CMV, another viral infection. Diaphoresis means you're sweating way too much. Ecchymosis, a red spot on the skin, ruptured blood vessels under the skin. It's not exactly a bruise. You can get these without being touched. If you're on heparin to keep you from forming blood clots, if you're an old person, this looks like old skin here, and people get um, weak uh, brittle blood vessels and they just kind of break and put um, blood patches underneath the skin. Edema is swelling, excess fluid out in the tissues. Erythema, red skin. Fungus, we know what that is. Induration is dura, is another hardening of the, of the tissue or hardening of the skin. We're actually getting close to having all of them. Jaundice, yellow skin, 
Xanthoderma, due to liver failure that causes bilirubin to pick up, build up in the blood instead of being excreted in the bile like it's supposed to. And it turns your whites of your eyes yellow, it turns your skin yellow. A keloid is a scar that is raised. Um, bad burns will give you keloid scars. Some people actually put keloids on their bodies kind of like a tattoo. Leukoplakia is white patches in the mouth. A macule is a freckle, just a flat brown spot. A nevus is a mole. The little island I lived on, the island next to us, the easiest one to see, was called nevus. And it was perfectly round, if you looked at it from the air. A perfect mole. A nodule is a bump, a lump on the skin. Pallor means you've turned pale. If you are about to faint or something, your body pulls the blood away from your skin to try to keep your blood pressure up and keep you awake, and you turn pale. Papule is kind of like a nodule, an elevated bump on your skin. Petechia are tiny red spots that maybe you get from scratching too much. There are some diseases or conditions that cause petechia also, but if you scratch too much and you get a whole bunch of little red dots from tiny broken capillaries under there, that's what that is. A pressure ulcer is a decubitus ulcer, a bed sore. Pruritus, itching. You got to remember that one. Everything wrong with your skin makes you itch. Pruritus, itching. Purpura is a bruise. Sounds like purple. That works for me. Purpura. A pustule is filled with pus. An ulcer is an open wound in the skin that is infected and uh, deepening. It's infecting downward and forms a little crater in the skin. Veruca is a wart. A vesicle is another term for a, a fluid-filled space. A virus is a very primitive organism that enters the body and causes disease. It's not as as developed as a bacterium. A bacterium has its own DNA and, and splits and you know grows that way. A virus has to use your DNA to replicate itself. So it goes into your body, you inhale it or whatever, and it goes inside your cells and harvests some of your DNA so that it can replicate. And a wheel is a raised itchy spot. A mosquito bite produces a wheel, so does urticaria, more body-wide. Primary lesions are things that uh, changes in the, in the skin that are pathological. They're caused by disease. Secondary lesions may be caused by injury. Vascular lesions are things like bruises, purpura, petechia, petechia. I've always called it petechia, but most people pronounce it petechia. So your primary lesions, a macule, a papule, a nodule, a wheel, pustule, a cyst, so some, there's a con skin condition causing it. Secondary lesions are things like scars. And vascular lesions, bruises, little spots, ecchymosis, breaking of blood vessels under the skin and causing those leakage spots, 
like old people get. A macule is a freckle, a papule, a lump, a nodule is basically they're, they're, a dip, they're made out of different types of material, but you know, they're not that different. Wheel, raised, itchy spot. A vesicle filled with liquid, a pustule filled with pus, a cyst. Cysts have sometimes liquid in them, but sometimes it's more like a gel. It's a little harder to get out if, even after you uh, open the, the skin. Sweating is diaphoresis. Diaphoresis. Alopecia, hair loss. Ecchymosis, the broken blood vessel under the skin that causes purpling spot, splotches of the skin. Abbreviations. Can you imagine how many there are? I will repeat time and time again, though, you're lucky because on the test, if the words are there, it's pretty easy to match them up with an abbreviation. But try as the best you can as you learn these things, think of what the abbreviation would be because on a doctor's note or um, a patient record or something, it's likely to be in the short form. Basal cell carcinoma. Oh boy, another e X. Biopsy. What's DX? Diagnosis. What's PX? Prognosis. What's RX? Prescription. BX? Biopsy. Cytomegalovirus. A decube is a pressure ulcer, a bed sore. Derm, dermatology. Hospital acquired MRSA. Here it is twice. Healthcare or hospital acquired MRSA, you get it in the hospital. That's kind of a common thing. It's one reason they try to get people out of the hospital quicker these days. So they won't catch pneumonia and won't catch MRSA. Incision and drainage. MRSA actually methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. So it's, it's resistant to the penicillin variety of, of uh, antibiotics. Intradermal systemic lupus erythematosus, squamous cell carcinoma, staphylococcus, streptococcus, subcutaneous, and transdermal, transoceanic, transcontinental. So, let's look and see what happened to this person. Emily visited the dermatology clinic because of pruritus secondary to dermatitis. Okay, well, we know what a dermatology clinic is. Pruritus is what? Itching. Secondary to dermatitis, inflammation of the skin, her scalp and areas of her elbows and knees. They diagnosed psoriasis, a at least partly autoimmune um, uh, attack of the skin causing flaky, itchy patches. Eczema, which is also a skin condition, um, uh, kind of an allergic skin condition. Scabies, which are mites. Antennae, remember the ringworm fungus, were also considered Cream was prescribed. In addition, the patient showed the dermatologist the tender discolored thickened nail of her right great toe. Learned she had onychomycosis. What does Mike have? He has a fungus. Onycho nail fungus, for which she was given additional prescription and a fungal drug. You can use topical 
antifungals, but it's really hard to get them under the nail far enough to do a good job. Oral antifungals are more effective, but they're hard on your liver. So it's kind of a uh, balancing act as to what treatment you might want to use to get rid of nail fungus. Examples. Leucoderma. People that get the white patches where they lose the pigmentation in their skin. White skin. Dermatitis. Inflammation of the skin sometimes caused by allergic reaction, sometimes caused by an infection, and this is actually called diaper dermatitis, diaper rash. Pretty bad case of it. More dermatitis, bl causing blisters, vesicles all over the fingers. A dermatofibroma, also known as a nevus, a mole. Fibrous tumor of the skin. Hydradenitis. This is an armpit. Looks pretty bad. Inflammation of the sweat glands. Onychocryptosis, condition of hidden nail, ingrown toenail, also a pretty bad version of one. Onychomycosis, nail fungus, and in this case, starts out looking like that, treatment over weeks and weeks and weeks, and winding up with a pretty normal looking nail at the end. Onychophagia, biting your fingernails, eating your fingernails. Pachyderma, this is actually somebody's armpit due to mites. Burrowing in there, laying their eggs, causing a thickening of the skin. Paronchia. This is an infection in there. There's pus in there. This is bacterial infection around the nail. It's pretty easy. You're digging down in the dirt and stuff, and bacteria get under the, the cuticle and back in there, and they can cause an infection around the nail. Seborrhea, flow of oil, sebum. Cradle cap, babies get this pretty often. It's a seborrhea that normally they grow out of. Trichomycosis, fungus, hair fungus. Xeroderma pigmentosum. So it's a condition that causes very dry skin, but it also causes a pigmenting of the skin, a change in color. Abrasion. Fell off his skateboard, or looks like maybe he was playing soccer <laughs> or something. Dermabrasion. Getting rid of a bump or a hole in your face by sanding it down and letting it grow back. An abscess, this is pus filled, will probably have to be lanced, incision and drainage. Acne vulgaris is the kind that Young people get, wonderful name, caused by increases in 
estrogens and, and androgens, testosterone, estrogens, and it causes a, suddenly, a sudden increase of oil production in the, largely in the face, the neck, and the back. Actinic keratosis. That's pretty nice. Growing a horn. Most actinic keratosis look like just hard, crusty spots that are made out of keratin, which is hair. Albinism, total lack of skin color, and it also affects the eyes. The eyes are usually very pale, sometimes pink. Basal cell carcinomas, little spot. That's what I had on my cheek. It was maybe the size of a BB, wound up with a hole the size of a quarter. Cellulitis, bacterial infection of the skin, usually in the lower legs and feet. Periorbital cellulitis, so it's around the eye. It's gotten in behind the eyelid or through a, a, a hair follicle or something and allowed the infection to get in and infect his whole lower eyelid and cheek. Some more diseases and conditions. There's your fur uncle, the single boil. Carbuncle, several heads. Usually a staph infection. Candidiasis, fungus, thrush. When people have lowered immunities, there are a lot of fungi that are around us all the time that suddenly are strong enough to take over. And this is one of them. And this can go all the way down your esophagus. It can be really, really uncomfortable. It also can happen uh, in some degree by taking um, uh, a lot of antibiotics or um, gargling with strong mouthwashes that kill your own natural flora that helps defend against the fungus. Contusion resulting in purpura. I have to hope she was in a car accident and didn't get beaten up by somebody. Eczema, pretty common inflammatory skin condition in kids, kind of an allergic reaction, although you can't necessarily find the allergen your body is reacting as though there's an allergic substance that it needs to fight. Kids have undeveloped immune systems, and sometimes they don't work just right. Fissure is a split. There's a split heel. Anal fissures are, are common, especially in people that have hemorrhoids, people that have constipation and have to try really hard to defecate. Gangrene, this was probably caused by frostbite. Killed the tissue, infection sets in, you have necrosis, you have an infection, you have a loss of blood flow. People wind up with amputations sometimes. Herpes simplex, simplex 1, cold sores, simplex 2, genital herpes. And herpes zoster, we saw before, 
causing chicken pox and shingles. Impetigo, bacterial infection, usually in kids, adolescents. Kaposi sarcoma, most often associated with full-blown AIDS, causing cancerous purple cancers all over the skin. Now that's a laceration. That's not a paper cut. A bad cut, laceration. Clean lacerations, though, are some of the easiest ones to get to heal properly because these edges can be brought exactly together compared to a tearing where you can only approximate maybe the, the margins so that they uh, have a harder time reforming. Pediculosis capitis, hair lice. Now, you can actually see lice. See, lice don't burrow, they just suck blood kind of like a flea does. And excoriations are little raised crusties that are caused by things like lice, partly by the lice themselves and partly by you scratching it afterward. Scabies are mites, pediculosis are lice. It's hard when you haven't seen it a while to remember but losis looks almost like lice. Pediculisis, pediculosis. That's how I remember when I haven't seen it in a long time. Crabs, pediculosis pubis, the crab louse, which does kind of look like a crab. Pediculosis corporis, body lice. Psoriasis, this plaque psoriasis, the growing of this raised, hard, really flaky, the skin keeps coming off and coming off, itchy and embarrassing. You know, it's hard for people to, to deal with big patches of that on their skin. Rosacea, condition that turns, your, turns you red. Now, it can be caused by an inflammatory condition, or it could be caused by going out for a run and you get really rosy. But they, the condition itself, rosacea, is a skin abnormality, a skin disease. Here's the mites. Again, you can't see the mites. They're burrowed into the skin. Squamous cell carcinoma, it's a more surface cancer, so you wouldn't think it would be quite as bad, but it's actually slightly worse than a basal cell carcinoma as far as its likelihood of causing long-term damage. Any of them will cause a lot of damage if you let them go so long that you have to cut your, half, your nose half off to get rid of it. Lupus, a lot of systemic problems, this butterfly rash, you're not seeing the side of her face, but here's one wing, then there's a little head, then there's another wing. It's called the butterfly rash that they get on their face. Tinea capitis, ringworm fungus but in the scalp. Tinea capitis, tinea corporis, athlete's foot is tinea pedis, jock itch is tinea crurus. Tinea corporis, ringworm. Boy, that really is a good ringworm there. But it's fungus, it's not a worm. 
And most of the tinnias can be cured with tinactin or you know, some kind of topical antifungal medication. Tinea cruris, jock itch. And tinea pettis, athlete's foot. Urticaria, just a sudden allergic reaction to who knows what, where your uh, immune cells of the skin kind of go wild and make these big raised wheels, W-H-E-A-L, wheel. Necrosis, that leg's coming off. means dead tissue. Cicatrix, scar. That's almost a keloid. It's raised. You know, I've got scars where I cut myself, but they're not raised at all. Cyst. Probably needs to be lanced. Get the fluid out of it. Some surgical terms that we've already seen, but here they are. A biopsy, taking a sample so that you put it under a microscope and look at it and see if you can see cell changes that would mean cancer. Dermatoautoplasty, taking some of your own skin, you put a whole bunch of holes in it, you can stretch it out so it's way bigger than it was, and then do a skin graft over a burn or something, and the holes will all fill in over time. Dermatoheteroplasty is coming from somebody else, in this case a pig. Dermatoplasty is simply repairing the skin, not necessarily a skin graft. It might just be kind of plastic surgery to put it all back together. Onychectomy, taking out a diseased or damaged nail. Ritidectomy. Removing some wrinkles. Ritidoplasty, a true facelift where you're taking out some skin and pulling it up instead of trying to fix each wrinkle from underneath. Not built from word parts, these guys. Excision of a carcinoma means to take it out. They're closures of incisions, um, stitches or sutures. Stary strips, and there's a new kind of stary strip. It looks really cool that's just been recently invented, seen it online, where you've got a piece here and a piece here, and you've got a strip going here, and you've got strips going this way, and you stick them on and you pull it like this, and the wound just goes, and then you stick them down. They're probably, I'll bet they start using those a lot. Stary strips work pretty well. Stronger are sutures, and staples are the strongest yet. Laser therapy, burning it out or cutting it out with a laser. Cytomegalovirus is a virus that usually attacks people that have a depressed immune system, such as those with AIDS. And although it can affect the skin, we'll see it again in the respiratory part because it tends to 
cause pneumonia type um, infections. Ecchymosis, blood released under the skin, usually not because of a contusion. A contusion causes a purpura. This kind of looks like a purpura to me. Oh, this, one has, this person has so many spots, they might be taking a blood thinner, and it's causing them to produce these subdermal hemorrhages. And Batichia, the little tiny red spots, that's a better view of that. Edema, swelling, usually ankles and feet, but the face can swell. Anything can swell. It's an accumulation of fluid in the outside of the blood vessels in the tissues. Here we have xanthoderma turning yellow from jaundice, from liver disease. There's a keloid, raised scarring from a burn. Pressure ulcer. Stage one is just kind of red. Stage two, you're getting through the surface. Stage three, you're down into the, the um, dermal layer. And stage four, you're all the way through it into the tissues beneath. Bed sores. And I've known people who were trying to take care of elderly relatives that couldn't turn over. And they did the very best they could. Lots of turning, lots of cleaning, lots of drying and they still got pressure sores. It's really hard to prevent. Stage four, pressure ulcer. Leukoplakia, the white plaques in the mouth. And that's it for the skin. That's a lot. That's probably the longest one with the greatest number of conditions that we're going to have in the course. However, like I say, several of these terms will be used over and over again later, um, especially when a condition of the whatever causes a, a, a kind of a skin abnormality to occur. So it's good to do it now so that you know the terms when they start showing up.